You ever delivered here before? A few times. I've never seen you before. That's why I asked. Guess I get seen when I'm supposed to get seen. I'm right here. I'm Mitchell. Nice to meet you. So, um, what's going on? Son, this is your mother calling. Called several times and I haven't heard back from you. Just call me back. I love you. You dropped him off over here like a bag of dirty laundry and forgot to pick him up. He was coming here to see you. What the hell are you talking about? He came to see us. It didn't fucking matter who took him. It mattered to him! Because I've been in love before. It's never felt like this. Oh, that wasn't love. I saw it. You had that glow. It was all up in your eyes. But love don't always come when you want it. But nephew, when it comes, you better name it and claim it. Ninth, it's about eight, thirty, thirty, thirty in the morning. I jumped up early this morning. I was supposed to get dressed and go to the. I have a flat tire I've had for two weeks now on this truck parked outside, and I wanted to get the tire replaced today because I had an appointment to get to bring my truck in at ten a.m. this morning to get the tire replaced. So I was gonna jump up, go do cardio, and then go to the. Um, so actually, I was just gonna go to the um, dealership and I do cardio while they fix the tire. Then they called me, I back, got a phone call about 7.30 from the dealership. They don't have a tire. So they gave me a couple of options to replace my truck. That BMW X5 has staggered tires. The two front tires or a different size than the two rear tires. So they don't have the tire that I need. So they're, it's a rear tire. So they're, they, what they do, what they can do once they get those in stock are replace the two rear tires with different tire manufacturers, different size, something. And I'm like, who paying for this? <laughs> Shit. I have insurance, will and tire protection. Uh, the one tire, which this truck has barely got maybe 2,000 miles on the job, maybe less, I don't know. So I'm thinking that that one tire uh, to replace it would have been easier, but they don't have that tire. And it could be several weeks before they get that tire in. So they were suggesting that they could, if they get it in, then it's already been two weeks and we still don't have it. So now they're saying they can replace the two rear tires and once they order those and wait for it to come in. This is all boiling down to the, you know, what's going on with the ports and the supply chain and all this other stuff. So, I need, I need, I really needed the tire replaced so I can go get my Christmas tree. So what I may just do today is, uh, while I'm free, go do cardio, and then I might just go rent a little van to pick up my Christmas tree and drag it on over here and just be done with it. Cause you know, sitting around here, I don't know when I'm gonna get this truck fixed. So it's not like I don't have additional cars parked outside. So I'm sure I'm not lucky, you know, I'm in a good situation. I have two, I have a total of three vehicles. One's down because of the tire, but I still have two other vehicles that I can drive. But I couldn't imagine having just that one car and not being able to find a tire to put on that car. And I have to wait weeks while this car is parked and I have to go to work. Luckily, I work from this couch right here, so I'm in good shape. That's the pledge. That's the good thing about working from home, you know. And, you know, that's, that's the good thing about working from home because 
I can sit here and I don't have to rush out no place and, you know, I don't have to be anywhere. So she's going to call me the girl from the dealership. We've been working this for a couple of weeks. She's going to call me back and hopefully we will resolve this tire issue sometime soon so that I can't go back to driving that truck. Um, my main concern or issue is just trying to figure out how to get this damn Christmas tree to this house. Not like they deliver Christmas trees. Can I go catch an Uber and catch <laughs> and throw it in the back of the Uber? That might that might be cheap. An Uber SUV. He put this tree in there, please. That man probably probably look me like I'm crazy. But if I go rent a little U-Haul van, I can throw that Christmas tree in the back of there and drop the tree off and drop the van back off, and just, you know, we'll see. But anyway, B Boy Blues. I saw the movie. You all just saw the advertisement for it. Excuse me. And, um, before you start this video, I watched the movie. You can watch it right here on the internet, or I watched it on my television. I have a smart TV, so I went to the app, put in my password and everything, and watched it on my television. I have a Samsung smart TV. Um, which I'm, I'm thinking about replacing this TV in my living room with a Samsung Smart TV since I ain't moving nowhere. I was going to be moving, but I said, fuck, I'm going to sit my ass right for another year or two. But anyway, the movie was... Okay, so I had to watch the movie twice. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. The first time I was watching the movie, I was doing some stuff, and I was kind of watching the movie, and it didn't, didn't hold my attention because the characters in the movie were kind of cartoonish. I'm a black gay man. I've been in a black community... Pretty much all my life, y'all. I mean, I've, I've known I was gay since I was preschool. The characters in this movie, the gay characters that were outwardly gay and not DL, were kind of cartoonish to me. Not real. Um, just the first time I watched it. And the reason why I say that, because I have thousands of friends in the gay community um, I've had thousands of friends in the gay community. I've lived my life in the gay community. And the way those characters were acting, I didn't know too many gay guys. I don't personally know too many gay guys who act like the characters in this movie. Do they exist? I'm sure they probably do exist. I just really haven't met any. Um, not, I mean, and I have to think long and hard about this because I want to be fair to this movie Y'all, I'm telling you, I've lived in the gay community. I'm 51 years of age. I've been actively involved in the black gay community here in Atlanta since I was since 1989. I don't know a lot of characters, a lot of men who behave the way those guys did in that movie. Most of my friends didn't all that. The character, the cartoon characterization is this, the over-the-top characters, they kind of lost me. And then... Once I stopped what I was doing and watched the movie a second time and really paid attention to the characters and listened to I, I found that once I took my experiences out of the equation, my experiences of black gay men, because I, I do know there are characters like these men in this movie that exist. I just don't know of any. None that have, I, I mean, I'm just really racking my brain. I might know a few. People might act that way occasionally, but not all the time. Um... Once I took my personal views and experiences out of the movie and sat down and watched it for what it was, entertainment, the movie's entertainment. I laughed. Um, I cried with the characters. I sat and watched and I relaxed my head because this movie has nothing to do with me. It's just entertainment. And I was being critical because I'm looking like, I don't know any gay folks like this. I know they exist, but the overall, the movie was good. The cinematography was good. The set direction was good. The characters were good. The acting was good. I thought it was good. Um, like I said, once I took my views out of it, like, I don't know any gay guys like this. Um, I thought the script was good. I thought the characters, the, the men and the women and the roles that they played, the lead characters, it seemed real. The, the two lead characters in particular seemed real, especially the scene where he introduced his son to um, 
the main character. Um, I forget the guy's name, but if you watch the movie, which I strongly suggest you do watch it, it's free on the internet. And the character, one of the characters introduces his son. I don't, I really don't give it away, but I've experienced something like that. Went to go someplace. I'm like, well, who's this? <laughs> My son. I'm like, oh, your son? What the hell is, what, what's going on here? And, you know, so it's kind of like a surprise because gay men do have children. One of my friends got eight kids. Eight. I was like, oh, Lord. I don't hear you know, so a lot of my friends have, have two. I just don't have any. Shit. I never want me. I had three cockers. We, we went through six cocker spags. I don't want no more doggies. You know, so too much work. Dog would never grow up. At least if we had had some children, maybe they'd clean up this damn house. Clean up this shit and get in there and get your ass back to college. Get out of here. And take that extra food with you. Don't call me for another couple of weeks. You've been here the whole time for Thanksgiving. Get out! That's what happens. I'm sure there's plenty of houses around here after Thanksgiving. They'll get your ass back to school. Because I did have the kids. They'd be in college right about now. Or they'd be running a business. You get your ass back to that office over there. You know, the way you're at work. But the movie, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I would strongly encourage people to enjoy it. And it's entertainment. You know, guys, sometimes we get so... When you look at a movie, you know, it's, it's not about, this ain't no, we ain't trying to dissolve world peace, y'all. It's just a movie. It's just entertainment. It's just something to laugh at, enjoy, laugh, have, have a glass of wine, a drink, bring some friends. Laugh. I wish I could have had some friends to watch the movie that night. I think we were at a rolling good time at that. Those characters, they were hilarious. Watch the movie. Go check it out. I think you will enjoy it. We don't get a lot of movies about gay black men like this. And, um, like I said, I enjoyed it. It took me a second time to watch it. The first time I was, like I said, I was in the middle of doing some stuff and I was kind of looking at the screen like, what the fuck is going on? But when I sat down with a vodka and cranberry and a piece of carrot cake and sat there and watched it, the movie was excellent. After I figured out how to get it to my TV. It's an app that you, I'll, I'll put the link in there. But please do check out that movie and let me know your thoughts and opinion of it. The characters. I, the movie is produced by Jess, Jos, Jesse Smollett, the guy who's going to trial in Chicago, who used to be on the TV show. Um, it's not Power. You remember the guy who was on the TV show? Um, he, he, he Something happened in Chicago. He said he was assaulted and by some guys and just a bunch of lies and... He called the police, and I can't remember what, what why the police got involved in that mess, but I knew it was a lie right off the rip. But um, he produced this movie, Jesse or Jesse or Jesse Smollett, I can't remember pronouncing it. I think it's Jesse Smollett. But he's, he produced this movie. I believe he plays a character in the movie, if I'm correct. I'm not too sure. But the movie was, uh, I, thought, I thought the movie wasn't, you know, it was good. It was entertaining. So I strongly suggest that you all take check out the movie. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the movie. And I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Like I said, I was in Aruba. So I'm coming back here now and getting back to the real world. It's supposed to be in the 70s later on in the week. But right now, it's kind of 44 degrees outside right now. So I'm about to get dressed and go do cardio at this gym since I'm going to be getting this tire fixed today. And figure out how the hell I'm going to get this Christmas tree over here to this house. I'll figure it out somehow. Um, this weekend was was good to get back to the home. You know, you take a vacation and you come back home. You're like, ah, I'm back at the house. Sometimes you got to get away to come back home. So I was glad to come back home. Even though I need somebody to come clean this house. It is a mess inside. It's dusty. I need someone. I'm at the hire somebody to come in and clean at least once or twice a month. Cause I think I am going. To, my, my lease is up, and I'm, I was going to. I have found this house I wanted to rent, and the young man who had the house, I filled out the application, and everything. He just was real funny acting, and, and then you know. So I said, you know, I really don't want to deal with. I, I I prefer if I'm going to rent to deal with a management company or an apartment complex, and not deal with a person who won't return my phone calls. And he was acting too. Then he had the, him and his wife had just had a baby and. Just a lot of confusion, so I said, you know what, let me just sit my ass right here and deal with these people. The apartment complex I live in now 
has changed hands and new owners. Maybe they're going to come and put some money in this damn place. Who knows? But the previous owners were, ooh, they were terrible. It was owned by some Jewish company. And he's out of business now. All the her properties he gone, thank goodness. That rich white boy, this Jewish boy, made a mint off the land with all these apartments. He overpriced for years and never fixed up. So maybe now, you know, I had to come here and rent this, paint this apartment myself. And one of the main reasons why I had to paint this apartment, because they didn't paint it after the last tenant moved out. And I was going to paint it anyway, but I really had to paint it when I saw dirty walls and and, and I'm like, are y'all going to paint this place? They're like, yeah, we're going to send somebody in to paint. And I'm like, but I'm moving in. When are y'all going to paint? Just trifling shit. You know, then, then it could also could have been this nigga management up here. I mean, I, they had new management here now. Who knows? But, you know, black folks, you know, they're like, hey, yeah, we're going to take care of it. And go slam that door on your ass and you never hear from their ass again. But the house I was going to rent yeah, my MacBook is acting up again. It froze, so I had to start over. Anyway, I am going to renew this lease. I don't have to go up to this lease and I'll let them know to get that lease ready. So I can just pay my rent and sit my ass here. Because I think that was probably the cheapest route, but I'm going to see if I can get some concessions. You know what I'm saying? I got what y'all going to give me over here since I'm renewing this damn lease. But anyway, today it is uh, Monday, November 29th. The year is 2021. Yes, we're still in the coronavirus. It's a new coronavirus, the Omicron. I was going to make I mention that. The Omicron. You know, maybe we had the, the, the Delta virus. First, we had the COVID, COVID, the coronavirus. Then we had the Delta virus. Now we have Omicron. All right, so, uh, you know. All we can do, y'all, is ride this shit on out two years into this mess. You know, uh, you know, it was two years ago, me and Earl went on that cruise to the, um, down the Caribbean. We went to, on that cruise, and he got off the cruise ship. It was, it was, um, the 25th. Earl went to the hospital the next Friday. So, this Monday is when he first said he got sick. And come say you ain't sick over these year. And check that insurance policy. And make sure now I'm talking to you. That insurance policy, insurance policy up to date. And, you know, I keep reminding Earl that two years ago he almost died in that hospital. He did die in the hospital, and I almost bought a beachfront condo in South Beach. But Lord had other plans and brought his ass back to life. And here I am still stuck in Atlanta. So, but had. You know, good things could have ended kind of drastically. And I could be since filming these videos from the my beachfront condo. But unfortunately, that did not happen, and I'm still here. You know, I thought at one point, I mean, keeping it real, y'all, I was going to get in my car get in this, and drive to Miami and find me an apartment and cancel and move and just pack all this shit up in a U-Haul and haul my ass to Miami, do like everybody else. Because you're waiting for the right time to go someplace and do shit that never is the right time. But I'm tired now. I feel like I'm unloading this damn apartment. I got so much. You know how you, you collect so much shit over the years, too? I think I collected a whole lot of shit in this damn place. And I need to start purging. Seriously, because I can be a bit of a pack rat like my mother. And I need, I, yeah, it's just too much stuff here. Right? Anywhere, anywhere, any place, every place I looked at for rent, half my furniture couldn't fit. This house that I was looking at was planning on renting. Would have owed quite a bit of stuff, and then I could even collect some more stuff because it was a bigger house. Collecting more junk. But, um, I wish, I, I really wish I could live in a high rise downtown Atlanta someplace, but it just ain't possible. Too many cars, parking, yeah, I forget it here, and parking's free. And, um, one day I went over to Kroger and locked my damn car keys in the, in the damn Jeep. This Jeep, I locked my car keys in there. Well, Kroger was right across the street, so I walked back home, got my extra key, unlocked the door, got the extra key to the, to the Jeep, and walked back over. It took me all about 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do all this. That's the good thing about living here. I really could walk to this grocery store across the street, and I have walked over there on a couple occasions. So, you know, that the community I live in now is walkable. There are restaurants, there are stores, there are... There's stuff that you can walk to. Um, 
And that's the reason why I moved over here. You know, I don't do much walking over here. I, I, I don't walk to the restaurant. <laughs> Y'all know I might get my fat ass right in that BMW. Mm -hmm. Park. Where, where the parking spots? Damn. Driving around a, for 15 minutes looking for a parking spot. Well, so you could have walked there ass over here across the street and been eaten by now. But you driving around the block looking for a parking spot. Oh, shut up. I'm going to find a parking spot. It's ridiculous. But it, it's true. I could have walked over there. I had this really good pizza place across the street, too. Oh, boy. But anyway, now I'm rattling. Today it is Monday, November 29th. The year is 2021. And I'm about to conclude this video and make me some more coffee and decide if I'm going to go do cardio. Uh, I guess I'm going to go do cardio. I guess that's all I can do. It's 9 o'clock now. I can run do cardio and get back here. The gym is right around the corner. I'm out of here, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. And I'll speak to y'all. Let me know about the Big Boy Booze movie. Tell me, let me know what you think about it. And um, I'm out of here and enjoy the rest of your day.